Hello everyone, this is James and welcome to Lectures. The lecture for today is about the brain and this is the series and this is part one. The brain is part of the central nervous system and it is one of the components, the other being the spinal cord. And it is a set of intelligence. It is an interpreter, interprets senses. It is also an initiator. It initiates uh, actions or movements. And then it also controls uh, behavior. And these processes are carried out by over 86 billion neurons found in our brain. Our brain weighs around 1,500 grams or 3.3 pounds, but because it floats with the cerebrospinal fluid, which created buoyancy, so the actual, the net weight of our brain is only 25 grams. So let's start with the cerebrum. The cerebrum is the largest part of the brain, and it is composed of two hemispheres the right and the left hemispheres. The right and the left are joined by the corpus uh, uh, callosum, which is a network of fibers allowing interaction between the two hemispheres. You notice the picture of a brain, it comes with folds, right? because it allows for maximum coverage. So the ridges, the ridges are called is called the, the, the gyrus or gyri. And then the groves is called the sulcus or the soci. So each gyrus has its own function, a different function from the other. And the sulci divides the gyri. And even it's a deep uh, grove, so it's called the fissure. And that's when you call the intracellular fissure that divides the, the right and the left hemispheres. And in our brain, we have the gray matter and we also have the white matter. The gray matter is composed of the neuronal bodies. So if you look at the, the neuron, we have the, the, uh, the body, and in the body we have the dendrites and the uh, nucleus, and then the axon, and then the axon terminal. The neuronal bodies, the dendrites, the nucleus that constitute the, the gray matter, which is the, the outer part of the uh, cerebrum, the outer cortex. And those gray matter are involved in those complex processes. And then the white matter, which is the axon, the axon. It's called white because in city it looks white because of the fat. It's a myelinated. Uh, axons and it's responsible for communicating between the gray matters of the brain to the rest of the body and now let's talk about the lobes of the cerebrum we have the frontal lobe which is the pink the um, parietal lobe yellow the occipital lobe um, the purple and then the green is the temporal lobe the the blue in the bottom that is the cerebellum on the lobe which is the the pink is uh, responsible for cognitive processes uh, attention judgment reasoning mood personality behavior and it is also responsible for the motor functions because the precentral gyrus which is part of the frontal lobe is responsible for all movements, voluntary movements. If you initiate the movement, then it's going to go to the, uh, it, it's going to start with the primary, primary motor cortex, which is in the frontal lobe. And also our Broca's area is found in our frontal lobe. So Broca's area is responsible for the production of speech. Our parietal lobe, which is in the picture, is responsible for all sensory sensory uh, interpretation or uh, proprioception or our spatial relationship to the space spatial um, everything that we feel temperature pain 
will go to the primary somatosensory cortex, which is the post central gyrus, and that is in the parietal lobe. The occipital lobe is primarily for the visual processing, so vision, that is your occipital lobe. And the temporal lobe is responsible for hearing and balance, and it has a direct line um, from the temporal lobe to the cerebellum. And also because some of the parts of the limbic system are, are located in the temporal lobe, like the amygdala, so the temporal lobe is also responsible for emotions and memory. Let's talk about cerebellum. So the cerebellum also has two uh, cerebral hemispheres and it's joined by the vermis. And the primary function of the cerebellum are uh, coordination, coordination, gait, uh, posture, uh, balance. Okay. But the cerebellum cannot initiate um, movement. And now let's talk about the brain stem. So the brain stem is the bridge um, that connects the cerebrum and cerebellum to the spinal cord. It is a conduit of tracts. So all those afferent and efferent tracts, your spinothalamic, your dorsal column, your um, corticospinal tract passes to the brain stem. And the brain stem also has 10 of the 12 cranial nerves. So 10 of the 12 cranial nerves originate from the brainstem. And the brainstem contains the reticular system, which is responsible for arousal and the wake and sleep transition. And the brainstem also has the, the, the vital reflexes that controls respiration and breathing. The superior part of the, the brainstem is the midbrain. It is called the midbrain because it is in the found in the middle of the brain. And two of the cranial nerves originate from the brain stem, from the midbrain, that is the cranial nerve number three, ocular motor, and then cranial nerve number four, um, which is the trochlear. So um, movements, eye movements, functions of, of the midbrain, and the midbrain also has the, the cerebral peduncle, or the peduncle, peduncle is the, the, the network of fibers or the bundle of fibers which carries the, the different tracks. And the, the midbrain has two, uh, we call it the colliculi, the superior colliculi which processes the, the visual information and then the inferior colliculi which processes the auditory information. And also, the substantia nigra, which produces dopamine for rewards and movement, are found in the is found in the in the midbrain. The midbrain is connected to the cerebellum via the superior cerebral peduncle. The pons is the middle of the brain stem, and four cranial nerves originate from the pons. Cranial nerve number four five, trigeminal, number six, abdosin, seven, facial, and eight, vestibulocochlear. And the pons is connected to the, uh, to the cerebellum via the middle cerebral peduncle. Okay. So the pons, based on the cranial nerves, um, basic function includes uh, carry sensation to the face, from the face, and eye movement, uh, chewing, uh, facial expression, uh, tongue sensation, facial uh, sensation. And the pons also is responsible for the neotoxic and the apneistic uh, breathing centers, which controls the rate and depth of breathing. So, the inferior part of the brain stem is the medulla or the medulla oblongata. So, this part directly connects to the spinal cord at the foramen magnum. Four of the cranial nerves originate from the medulla, and these are the cranial nerves number 9, glossopharyngeal, uh, number 10, vagus, 11, um, spinal accessory, and 12, um, hypoglossal. And the medulla also has the, the nucleus of solitary tract, which detects 
CO2, O2, and you know, uh, heartbeat, uh, heart rate. And then we'll try to correct it if it's too high, if it's too low. And it is the primary breathing centers because the medulla will be the one telling the um, signaling the the respiratory muscles to to breathe in and breathe out. Um, the medulla contains a lot of reflexes, reflexes for swallowing, uh, chewing, um, vomiting, and also it is the site for the decussation in the pyramidal decussation. So. Uh, like the corticospinal tract, which originate from the right uh, uh, right hemisphere. So in the medulla, it decussates and then it crosses to the other side of the body. So that's why if you have um, a lesion on the right side of the brain, the movement affected is on the left side because it decussates in the pyramidal, in the medulla. That is all for today and watch out for the second part which is the limbic system and the basal ganglia.